what's happening guys uh, so this video is going to be uh, more on the Holly Terminator X and this is about how to take some injector data that you have where uh, you know the injectors you're going to use are not one of the ones in Holly's predefined drop down list and you have to go into custom settings um, it's going to talk about how to read one of those injector specification sheets and translate that into what you need to put in here if you have to use custom information uh, one of the things also I'm going to mention before we get into that is I actually have both the uh, Holly Terminator X and the Holly Terminator X V2 software uh, installed on this machine and I can I can run them both at the same time and I just wanted to point something out to you so uh, the screen you're looking at right now this is uh, this is the first uh, first version not not V2 and you can see like when you look down at Ford data they only have 19 20 uh, 24 and 30 pound injectors uh, you know, most of what Ford sells today, and those are kind of old school injectors, most of Ford's stuff they sell today, it's not in here. Um, however, if I flip over to the V2 software and hit the drop down list, you notice this list is a lot longer. So it's just one of those things um, that I've kind of observed as a, a key difference between the two versions of software is they've, you know, made more of these injectors available. Now, the specification sheet we're going to look at today is for uh, one of the, the injectors I recommend to a lot of uh, bolt-on cars running like real low boost or uh, or maybe it's a, a kind of a higher power naturally aspirated pump gas deal. Uh, and that's going to be the Ford Racing LU47 injector, which again in the V2 software is available right here. But as an experiment, we're going to go to Ford specification, go back to the V1 software, plug the numbers in. And then we're going to compare this and see how close Holly's data is to uh, what's directly on the Ford spec sheet. So jumping back over, this is the spec sheet itself. And, you know, when you're looking at any specifications for an injector, they won't always look like this. This is just what Ford's sheets uh, look like for theirs. But every injector is always rated at a given fuel pressure. So uh, you always want to make sure that when you are plugging the data into your Holly system, you've got the rated injector pressure, this number should always match whatever the rated injector uh, pressure is on the spec sheet. And we're going to come back to that setting in a minute, but that's the first thing. Uh, now the next thing it's going to ask you is the rated flow per injector. Uh, and this is kind of like your, your, you know, your key rating size, right? So if it says like it's a 30 pound injector, a 42, a 60, an 80, that's usually about what this rated flow per injector is going to be. Uh, but on the Ford specification sheets, you have to convert units because this is specified right here in pounds per second of fuel. This is pounds per hour uh, that it's expecting here. So to convert from pounds per second to pounds per hour, there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So it would basically be this number that Ford provides times 60, which would be pounds per minute, and then take that number times 60, and that would be pounds per hour. So calculator comes out and we'll do uh, 0 0.013005 times 60 and then times 60 again and that would be Ford's rating for this particular injector at their rated pressure of 39.15 psi so 46.818 so back to the Holly software we'll call that 46.82 and this is rated at 39 point, uh, we'll just kind of round it, 39.1 uh, PSI pressure. Uh, this is going to stay on sequential. Um, and then you have the minimum injector opening time. So this is uh, also often listed uh, directly on the spec sheets. In Ford's case, it's their minimum pulse width, and it's 0.687 milliseconds. So 0.687 rounds up. Uh, and so that's kind of the first part of this. Now, the last thing you have to do is you have to put in this injector off time. And this is also um, on some specifications referred as like a voltage offset, um, you know, something along those lines. There's several different terms for it. And so the idea here is that you've got all these different voltage points. Uh, and at any given voltage point, uh, the injector is not going to behave the same way. So as the voltage is higher, you kind of get more flow through the injectors, so they don't really need to open it quite as much. Uh, and as the voltage on your, your car drops, 
um, then it's going to have to open the injector a little bit longer to get the same amount of flow out of it. So that's really what the purpose of this offset uh, or this injector off time is for. So again, you notice high voltage, not lower numbers. And as the voltage climbs up, you see a curve that kind of builds up from there. And eventually you have a lot more uh, injector pulse width that it adds at very, very low voltages. And hopefully if your car is healthy and happy, it's probably hovering somewhere around 14 volts if you... Uh, are using a normal 12 volt battery and you have an alternator in the car. Uh, if you run a 16 volt battery or uh, or you have an electrical problem or a small alternator or whatever, it might dip as low as, you know, 11, 12, 13, but anyways. So uh, to go back to Ford's data, I mean, here's all the numbers right here. So if you run into a spec sheet, like the biggest uh, voltage Ford list on theirs is 15 volts. So anything that's higher than 15 volts in this list, you would basically just make the same. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and plug in there uh, 0 0.719. Okay. Uh, so that gets us from 15 volts on, and then we start working down from there. So at 14 volts, it's 0 0.813. At 13 volts, it is 0 0.935. Okay. Uh, 12 volts. We are at, what was that again? 1.075. At 11 volts, we are at 1.255. 10 volts, 1.483. Eight volts is 2.274. And that's kind of as far as it goes. And then we've got some of these kind of weird in-between numbers. So uh, we basically just grab the range from like a low number that we actually set and a high number we set. And when we say fill row values, it'll just fill in uh, in a linear way between the two. Uh, and then we use the, the same thing here for that 11 volt. Actually, they gave us 11, my bad. Let me plug that in. Uh, it was 12 volts, 1.075. Okay, so we end up with something that looks like this. And the next thing that we have to do is decide, well, what fuel pressure are we actually going to run this at? And that's where you specify the actual system pressure up here. Now, this is kind of another important concept. So let's say you, you are going to run this at 50 PSI. Just that's what you're going to set on your pressure regulator, and we need to build around that. So obviously you would want to put this at 50 because that is your actual fuel pressure, but we don't necessarily have to leave the, the injector's information the way it is because some uh, manufacturers like Ford, they give you some multipliers that you can use. So, you know, the numbers we started with over here on the left was all assuming that you're going to run it at 39 PSI, which is what Ford did from the factory on a Fox body. But what if you're not? What if you're going to run higher pressure because you're trying to kind of squeeze a little more out of the injector so you go up to 50 or 55 PSI? Well, that's what these multipliers are for. So let's pretend now that we're going to run our system at 50. Let's actually go in here and do something a little bit more specific. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this number uh, that we used, which was uh, our rating. So we add 46.8 as our uh, injector flow. So we'll take that number and we'll multiply that by 1.1304, which is what they're saying is the multiplier for that particular pressure uh, for the high slope, which is ultimately your injector flow. So 46.18 uh, times 1.1304 brings us up to 52.9. So back to Holly. That's our new injector flow. Of course, we're going to go ahead and switch this also to 50 PSI because that's its equivalent rating at that particular pressure. Um, and then we also are now going to have to go through all these injector off times and we have to make a change there. So now you can see here's the multipliers for your offset. So if we're at 50 PSI, we need to also offset all of that by 1.1304. So we can technically just take all of these numbers right here. We can do an offset uh, and then we can just multiply by you know, whatever we want to. Um, so multiply by 1.1304. And there you have it. 
So that would be your new injector data. So what we're going to do now is, uh, now that you kind of know how to plug those numbers in uh, from the factory and also compensate if you want to run at a different pressure, that's kind of the basics now. Let's go back to when we had this set for 39 PSI and just kind of see what we end up with. And of course, I'm screwing up the numbers here. Uh, so let me go back to the sheet real quick and uh, fix some things because I'm fat fingered. So we'll smooth this back out. And we'll smooth that back out. And we had here, going back to our calculation, times 3,600. So our injector size is 46.82. And that's at 39.1. So now let's put this side by side with the Holly V2. And let's see exactly what they did. So Holly in the V2, and I'll scroll down just a little bit so we can see all the numbers. So theirs is now rated at 43.5 PSI, and they came up with a number of 51. So they basically didn't use uh, 50, they didn't use 39, they went somewhere in between. And so because Ford doesn't technically provide the exact numbers between uh, those two particular pressures, then you'd have to kind of do some math and some averaging to... Uh, to figure out really what that would look like if you really want to try to dial it in at the same pressure. Um, but, you know, their injector opening time is, is substantially higher. If we look at their voltage offsets and just kind of see what we have here. So this is at 15.2. They've got it at 0.64. So the voltage offset from Ford is actually much higher. And it looks like that same trend is pretty much going to follow through the entire range. Um, down at, here's where we're at at 12, we're at 1.03, Ford had it at 1.075, plus being even higher for the offset. So, um, you know, is Holly's data in here bad? No, this is pretty, pretty close. Uh, but I would always use the manufacturer's data versus Holly's data because Holly didn't make these injectors, Ford did. And um, not saying that's right or wrong, you'd probably be close enough uh, using what Holly supplies in version two if you have that. Uh, but I'd, I'd rather calculate it myself and, and come up with some real numbers. Now, another thing I want to talk about before I get off this subject is, you know, what I see a lot of guys end up doing is they just go right down the path of, well, my injector's not in the list, so I'll just pick something that's close. There's really no such thing as something that's close when you're talking about injectors because it's not about a single number, just what's the flow. Because if that's the only thing we cared about, then all the injectors, if it's a 42-pound injector, it's a 42-pound injector. They'd all be the same. But it's not. So... This is why, you know, I, I always tell people, quit buying fuel injectors if you don't have the data for them. If it's not already in Holly's dropdown and the manufacturer also does not supply the data directly through a calibration sheet of some sort like this, again, Ford does it, Pro-M does it for their injectors, Injector Dynamics, Fuel Injector Clinic, and a few others, but there's also a whole bunch of crap out there where they don't do that. So... Don't buy those injectors. Buy injectors that you got known data for. I'm not, you know, I don't sell Ford injectors. I'm not getting paid for any of this stuff. It's just, I go to stuff that actually works, that's documented, and makes it easier to tune. If it's easier for me to tune, it's going to be easier for you to tune. So I'm always looking out for you guys, your best interests. So just be thinking about that. And if you guys, uh, you know, down in the comments for this video, if you come up with any uh, weird injectors that you have that you're struggling with, Shoot, shoot a note to us. Let me know what injectors you have, and I'll dig through my archives and the research that you know we've done. Let's see if we can come up with something. Maybe we have some slightly better data uh, than what you have, or we can kind of guide you down the right direction. But the key takeaway is don't be lazy. Look up the data if you can get your hands on it. Use the custom settings and key in the real stuff. Don't just pick the next closest thing. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Good luck. Godspeed.